shaving cream. <laughs> Eating it? Yeah, I'm doing a test for tonight's show. Oh, they're doing all sorts of things with shaving creams now. This one is coconut papaya flavored with brandy. <laughs> Susan? Uh -huh. Oh, hello, Arlene. Susan, after you finish those shaving cream tests, I'm going to need tests on cough syrup, sardines, and dog chow. So much for lunch. <laughs> you want all this for the night? All for tonight. Hey. Our esteemed station owner doesn't think I'm handling enough items for a consumer guide show. One day he doesn't like my show. The next day I'm not doing it up. Sometimes I get the feeling he's goading me into quitting. Uh-oh, maybe that's it. Maybe what's it? Well, sometime in the front office I hear things that I'm not supposed to hear. I have to play dumb. <laughs> well, um, well, what is it, Arlene? What'd you hear? Well, I heard Mr. Clyde on the telephone, and he's got a relative that just came to town, and he's bringing him here to the station, and what he said was that he would find him something to do. Oh, well, that doesn't necessarily mean he's getting Brad's job. Well, all I can tell you is what I heard. He said he needed a change. Oh, but it still doesn't mean... No, no, mean wait, wait a second, wait a second. This is something I've been suspecting for a long time. It figures. After all my work, I'm going to be replaced by some dumb relative who probably can't hold down a job anywhere else. Brad, I think you're being a little hasty. You do? Well, I don't. You know, this is just another indication of the kind of regard that Clyde has for me. I bet you it's a brother-in-law at that awkward stage. Too old to get a job, too young for Social Security. Oh, come on, Brad. I mean, I think you should wait and see. Wait for what? I know what it is. It's going to be Uncle Willie. Uncle what? Uncle Willie. You know, a brother-in-law has been embarrassing the family for years, and now it's Gus's turn to give the rummy a job. Good morning. I want you to meet one of my relatives. Why, Brad, say hello to Uncle Willie. You know, the rummy. <laughs> Got a brand new life Just an independent girl With a special way of knowing Everything is gonna be yours This is my nephew, Todd Clyde. He's going to be staying with me for a few weeks, and I thought I'd show him around the station. This is Susan Goodnow and Brad Gabriel. Hi. Now, Todd, why don't you come on into Mr. Gabriel's office? There's a window in there that overlooks the Hollywood freeway. You might enjoy watching the traffic. <laughs> he's only 15, and he's here because of a personal problem back home in Philadelphia. He was going with a girl, and they broke up, and it upset him terribly. He was moping around, very unhappy. So my brother sent him out here to be with me. Oh. Well, is there anything we can do to help, Mr. Clyde? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know what to do with a 15-year-old. I'm trying to keep him busy, you know, so he'll forget this girl. This morning, I asked him to mow the lawn, and I looked out the window, and he had his arms around the lawnmower talking to it. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, he's going through a difficult time. Now, I remember when I was 15. Well, I don't want I to hear about it. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'd do with him if he were my boy. I'd send him to military school. He'd forget about girls. Gus, don't you think boys in military school have any romantic yearnings? Yes, but they march it out of them. <laughs> Plus, I think they put something in their food that simmers them down. <laughs> Todd, now I'm going back to my office now. Okay. And remember, Todd, these people have work to do, so try not to get in their way. Okay. When you get through looking around, come back to my office and you can watch my tropical fish. Okay. And Todd, try not to answer everything with okay. Okay. Oh, I give up. Happened yes, sir, and no, sir. I never heard of anything like that. Okay. Back to work. Susan, can I see you in my office for a minute? Oh, sure. Excuse me, Todd. I'll be right back, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right, I don't know about you, but I don't intend to babysit for Clyde's nephew. Who said you had to? Well, you offered. Is there anything we can do to help Mr. Clyde? 
Oh, come on, Brad. The boy has a personal problem. Everybody's ignoring him. He just needs a little friendly atmosphere. It's no big deal. Okay. But you've got a lot of work to do. Did you ever go back to that jewelry store and pick up the ring that you left there? Brad, it'll get done. Relax. The kid will not get in the way. Okay. But all I can tell you is that I had teenage love affairs when I was a kid, and I managed to take care of them myself. I find that hard to believe. What? That I had teenage love affairs? No, that you were ever a kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, Todd, um, how about giving me a hand with these, okay? Uh, oh, sure. Right. So, is your Uncle Gus giving you a little tour? No, I don't think Uncle Gus even wants me around. He just tells me to go watch his tropical fish. Ooh, that could be very boring. I've seen those tropical fish. <laughs> Todd, listen, you won't tell anybody this, but... What? Have you noticed that one of those guppies is the spitting image of your Uncle Gus? <laughs> I know which one you mean. The one with the big eyes. <laughs> And you don't want to hang around here all day staring into a fish tank, do you? No, I sure don't. Okay, listen, how would you like to come out on an assignment with me? What kind of an assignment? Well, uh, we're investigating these crooked jewelry stores, you see? Now, how they work is uh, you leave a ring, say a diamond ring, for polishing or repair. And then when you go back to pick it up, they've switched the diamond with a piece of glass. They really do that? Well, some of them do. There's this one store that we suspect, and I've left a ring there and about to go down and pick it up. So would you like to come with me? Yeah, okay. Oh, terrific. Oh, Todd, when I go out on these assignments, I generally wear some kind of disguise so they won't recognize me. Uh, neato. What could I be? Oh, um, I know. You can be my boyfriend. Neato. I like older women. <laughs> neato. <laughs> Okay, Todd, I want you to play it straight, right? Uh, yes, may I help you? Oui, bonjour. I am Mademoiselle Devereau. I have come to pick it up. The ring which I have left it with you to be polished and cleaned. Miss <laughs> Devereaux, your ring is ready. I'll get it for you. Oh, merci beaucoup, very much. You do that real good. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> Here you are, Miss Devereaux. They did a beautiful job. Merci. If you will give me a moment to check it out. Hello. <laughs> this is not the ring that I brought into you. Definitely not the ring. I don't know what you're talking about. Zit. I am certain more. This is not the ring. Definitely not the ring. I know what you have done. You have made the grand switcheroo. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, 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 oh. You know what I am talking about. You have taken out from me the diamond and you have put in me the glass. <laughs> what do you think I am? Some kind of nitwit? <laughs> Quelle horreur! Quelle scandal! Quelle ripoff! Uh, lady. <laughs> Come back tomorrow. The ring will be right. Let's forget the whole thing. Oh, forget the whole thing. Oh, no, monsieur. I will not forget the whole thing. Jean-Paul, la porte. Monsieur, your business, it is fini. Your goose, it is cooked. <laughs> Au revoir. Creep. <laughs> Did you see the look on his face when you told him his business was fini? I thought he was going to cry. You really were cool. Well, it's all in a day's work, Todd. Listen, uh, I've got to go downstairs to the supply room for a minute. Can I go with you? Oh, that's okay. I'll be right back. Susan. Yeah? Thanks. I really like being with you. You know, the jewelry store and then lunch afterwards. The whole thing was really super. Mademoiselle Devereaux at your service. <laughs> Oh, hello, Todd. Hello. Mr. Gabriel. Mr. Gabriel, could I talk to you? Yeah, sure, kid, but I have a lot of work to do. It'll only take a minute. Okay. Shoot. What do you want to talk about? Mr. Gabriel, you know a lot about women, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, kid, you, uh... <laughs> might say I've been around the track a few times. <laughs> What's your problem? Oh, it's not me. It's a friend of mine. 
See, there's this girl, and he likes her. I mean, he likes her a lot. He wants to be with her all the time. But she doesn't know that. So what's he supposed to do? It's simple, Todd. Do you know what turns a woman on? A man who is decisive. A man who takes charge. There's a lot of talk nowadays about this macho guy being a thing of the past. Don't you believe it, champ. <laughs> a man is still the hunter. You hunt and you take over, conquer, vanquish. Is that what you've always done? If we had time, I would tell you about my trophies. <laughs> But how do you know that'll work for my friend? See, he's kind of shy. And the girl, well, she's kind of smart and more experienced. OK, well, does your friend love this girl? Yeah, I think so. OK, then he's got to take the bull by the horns and tell her. That he loves her? Exactly. But first, first, Todd, he's got a stalker. Stalker? <laughs> you know, the hunter. And after she's been stalked, it's Tally Ho! <laughs> okay. I'm sure glad I talked to you, Mr. Gabriel. Thanks. Sure, kid. Thanks a lot. I'm glad I helped you. Oh, Todd. Huh? Good hunting. <laughs> Hi, Todd. What you been up to? Oh, thank you. You know, Todd, this is a kind of unusual week for you to visit the station because we're doing three tests. You usually only do one. Excuse me. But I don't mind the extra work, you know, because it really is kind of an interesting job. Every week it's something different, and there's never any routine, which is really the best kind of job to have. You'll find that out when you uh, grow up. Um, but, you know, I mean, actually, this week it's sort of sardines and dog chow and cough syrup, and certainly dog chow's hard to test because you really need a dog to do it, and I don't even have a dog, and what are you doing? I'm stalking you. <laughs> Your what? Susan, I love you. Wait a minute, don't blame me. I didn't know the kid was talking about you. Even if he wasn't, what kind of advice is that to give a 15-year-old kid? Be a hunter. Stalk. I'm surprised you didn't have him come after me with a bow and arrow. He told you I said that? Hunt and take over, conquer and vanquish. Referring to women as trophies? What do you have in your apartment, a couch or a shelf? Susan Goodenow, I'm really surprised at you. And I might add disappointed. You know how I stand on women's rights. I'm a member of the National Organization for Women. I, I'm a supporter of the Equal Rights Amendment. Does that sound like something I would say? Tally ho? The kid talks too much. Oh, no. Brad, you talk too much. Now, how are you going to get me out of this? I, I don't understand. I thought he had a girl back in Philadelphia. You heard. They broke up. He got me on the rebound. Why are you making such a big thing out of this? Just tell him you're old enough to be his mother and... <laughs> Almost old enough to be his mother and, uh, and walk away. I'm not that kind of mother, Brad. I don't abandon my young. All right, so what do you want to do? Well, I, I think there's only one thing I can do. I, I have to let the kid down easy. I think that I should tell him that I'm already spoken for, that I have a fiancé. Ooh, that is not bad. Well, I'm glad you approve. See how simple it is? Now all you have to do is find some clown to do it. <laughs> Welcome to the circus. <laughs> yes. Oh, hi, Todd. Come in. Hi, Susan. These are for you. Oh, thank you, Todd. And this is for you. Oh, my goodness. Well, what is it? Thank you. Open it and see. Uh, okay. Oh, why, it's... It's, it's my uh, high school letter sweater. It means you and I are steadies. <laughs> Todd, there's a reason why I asked you to come here tonight. It's, well, it's to discuss where we go from here. I don't care. How about Taco Bell? <laughs> We are, we are eating here, um, the three of us. Three? Yes, Todd, I really tried to tell you this before, but you really didn't give me a chance. Todd, I already have a boyfriend. 
And, well, I asked him to come over here tonight so that we could explain the situation and see how impossible the whole thing really is. Oh, good idea. After we explain the situation to him, maybe he'll leave and we can have dinner. <laughs> I don't understand. Who is he anyway? Excuse me. Hi, Brad. <laughs> Hello, honey. <laughs> Him? Him. Oh, thanks, sweetheart. Hello, Todd. Hello, Mr. Gabriel. Well, why don't we all just sit down on the couch and discuss this like three intelligent adults? Brad, you want to start? Start? Yes, I think you should tell Todd that when he came in to talk to you, if you had any idea that he was referring to me, you would have stopped him. Right. You would have told him that you and I are engaged to be married, and it's just, I'm not available. Right. Very good, Brad. <laughs> Did you hear Brad, Todd? Now do you understand? Yeah, but so what? Maybe after you go out with me for a while, you lose interest in him and you'll pick me. But Brad loves me. Don't you, Brad? Right. You see? I love you, too. Brad loved me first. I love you better. Brad loved me longer. Right. <laughs> Look, Todd. Susan here is my life. She's my everything. She's the cool, cool, cool of the evening. She's my lucky star. She's the cream in my coffee. Brad. For Susan, I would climb the highest mountain, swim the deepest river. How do I love her? <laughs> Let me count the ways. Excuse me, I think I'll just go into the kitchen and check the roast. Brad, would you give me a hand? I'll help you. Oh, Brad can do it. Sure. Birds do it. Bees do it. Brad can do it. <laughs> This kid is stubborn. Maybe military school isn't such a bad idea. We're at an impasse. I hate to do this, but I'm just going to have to throw a scare into him. Yeah. Oh, good idea. We call the police and say we found him in your bedroom trying on one of your dresses. <laughs> um, oh, I've got it. I've got it. He'll be out of here just like that. Todd. Oh, he's gone. Todd. <laughs> Todd, just how serious are you about me? I'm real serious. I gave you my sweater, didn't I? Okay, Todd, this is how it is. Brad here doesn't want to get married right away. Isn't that right, Brad? Oh, right. Yeah, and I just don't want to wait. So if you want to get married right away, I'll pick you over Brad. Married? Right away. <laughs> oh, wow. Excuse me. I won't be able to stay for dinner. Oh, where are you going, Todd? I'm going to call my folks in Philadelphia. They'll want to be here for the wedding. All right! <laughs> Come on, cheer up. We'll be the first marriage where the wife gets to sign the husband's report card. Where is she? Where is she? What have you done to my nephew? The poor boy comes out here to get over a silly love affair, and what do you do? You lead him right back into another one. Oh. How did you do it? With oatmeal cookies? Please, Mr. Clyde, I can explain. You can. We'll explain it to Todd's parents. I just got off the phone with my brother. Todd called him last night and told him he was marrying a woman 20 years older than he is. 14. <laughs> the entire household is in an uproar. Even the little girl he broke up with is at the house crying her eyes out. It's shocking. Just shocking. Hey, excuse me, Mr. Clyde. Yes? Did you say the girl that Todd used to go with is at your brother's house? Kathy, crying her eyes out. Where's Todd? In my office, drinking a milkshake and looking at literature on honeymoon cruises. <laughs> Could I have the number of your brother in Philadelphia, please? What for? Oh, please, Mr. Clyde, I just have an idea. Well, all right. I shouldn't be doing this. Lord knows you've caused enough trouble already. Oh, well, here it is. Thanks, Mr. Clyde. Listen, and would you bring Todd down here, please? If you're calling Philadelphia, call Collect. What do you suppose she's up to? I really don't know, Gus, but I must tell you it was not Susan's fault. Todd made all the moves. 
You mean you knew about this? You might say I was indirectly involved in it. Then why didn't you come and tell me? You're no better than she is. I'm surrounded by enemies. Surrounded. Hello? Hello, is this the Clyde household? Yes. Hello, can I talk to Kathy, please? It's long distance. She is. Well, maybe you could put the phone down on the floor beside her. <laughs> Hello, Kathy. Hi, oh, Kathy. This is Susan Goody now in Los. Oh, Kathy, please. I, I can't understand you if you keep crying like that. Uh, all right, listen. I'll talk while you blow your nose. <laughs> Kathy. Put... Kathy, tell me something. Wouldn't you like Todd to come home? Oh, oh, yes, it does matter. No, you don't. You don't want to shave your head and move into a hollow log. <laughs> you love Todd, I know that. Yes, you do. Now, you know what you have to do, Kathy? You have to tell him that. Yes, you have to use the straightforward approach. That is what turns a man on. You have to be a hunter. You have to be... You have to vanquish Todd. You see, you, if he, Todd is what you want, you have to hunt him and take over. Think you can do that? Okay, uh, how would you like to tell him right now? Okay, just hold on. Todd, take this. Who is it? Just someone who wants to talk to you. Hello? Fred, are you eavesdropping? No. Oh. But if he turns it down, I'm going to throw him out the window. Are you eavesdropping? No, I'm not. Yes, you are. Shh, I can't hear. Susan? Yes, Todd? Susan, I don't know how to tell you this. What, Todd? I hope you're not mad or anything. But, well, I have to go back to Philadelphia. You do? Yeah. <laughs> I, I just have to go back. Are you mad? No, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Goodbye, Mr. Gabriel. She's all yours now. <laughs> Goodbye, Susan. Goodbye, Todd. Todd? Yeah? Don't you want your sweater back? No, you can keep it. I got lots of them. <laughs>